This is what I look like today. But 10 years ago, let me break it down for you. It's 2012. My family's about to move from Rio to Paris, and I'm about to start high school. I'm 14 and a little chubby. I have short hair and I wear rectangular glasses. I settle in. Most freshman classes are assigned to me, but I get to pick my electives. I don't know it back then, but I pick two very important classes. I take web design. I'm exposed to all the bizarreness of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I get to make websites for fun. It's instant gratification. I type some lines of code and then I see them pop up on the screen. I feel like a hacker, inspecting element and playing in the developer console. And for my final project, I create a babysitting website. I'm proud of the nav bar and the image slideshow. And of course, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm copy pasting random snippets of code from Stack Overflow, but I'm creating something new and that gets me hooked. Then I take mobile application programming. We use MIT App Inventor to build Android apps. It's all drag and drop, but it's the first time I see control flow and logic, if this, then that, and loops, the building blocks of computer science. We used the emulator to test our apps, and then we played them on our phones. I remember running home and telling my dad to pull out his Blackberry and saying, I made Brick Breaker too. It's 2013, I'm a sophomore now, I have a small group of friends, we play basketball and alternate eating Chipotle and KFC after games. I wanna take AP Computer Science, but it's reserved for seniors. I convinced the school to let me take it anyway. We're taught Java and Grid World, how to program critters in a virtual environment. I learn about private variables, static context, and encapsulation. Every day I'm learning something new, and it's exhilarating. It's also the first time I learn abstraction, how we can think of everything like black boxes. We don't care how they work, just that they give us the right things. And from now on, every analogy I use is, it's just like a black box, and everyone hates me for it. Sometime this year, the internship comes out. It's a feel-good story about a software engineer internship at Google. I see colorful bicycles, a sprawling campus that looks like Disney World, and free food. Picture the greatest amusement park you've ever been to as a kid. Now imagine a place nothing like it and a million times better. That's where we are. I'm intrigued. Everyone looks so happy, and it seems like getting an internship, the entire premise of the movie, is extremely challenging, yet also very desirable. On the last day of AP Computer Science, our teacher tells us about CSSI, the Computer Science Summer Institute hosted by Google. The same Google from the movie. It's like all the dots in my world were connecting. Let's go check in, look towards those big, big letters there. She passes along the email address of her friend, Andrew, at Google, and encourages us to reach out. I email him, but never hear back. There's two reasons why this is important. First, the internship is no longer just an idea, it's a possibility. And second, I get ghosted. It stings, but it also makes me basically immune. Lesson number one, always ask. Worst case, the answer is no. My family moves to the United States. It's 2014 and Houston becomes home. I start junior year at St. John's. There's definitely a culture shock and I don't fit in great. So I just focus on studying and playing sports. I sign up for differential equations and multivariable calculus. They are by far the hardest classes I've ever taken, and I'm surrounded by some of the smartest people I've ever met. It's the first time I feel imposter syndrome. You might be thinking how all these math classes connect to coding, and they do, I promise. But more than that, they thicken my skin. Getting a B in multivariable calculus was like getting an A to me. It's cliche, but I learned to never give up and always try my best, to roll with the punches and keep on pushing. You see, these math classes were so high level that we used Mathematica to understand some of the concepts. We'd use it to model differential equations and visualize multivariate models. And it's when I made the connection for the first time. Computer science is the theory. Programming is the application. My senior year in 2015, I took linear algebra and then partial differential equations. These were some of my favorite classes ever. I fell in love with matrices and beams and rods. And yup, you guessed it, more Mathematica. Later that fall, I applied to many universities, Ivy, Stanford, MIT, and a bunch of other places. I was rejected from almost everywhere. I was devastated. I thought I was a top student deserving of the top schools. Lesson number two, life is unfair. Make the best of the hand you're dealt. I graduated from St. John's in 2016. I applied to CSSI, formally. I was rejected. That summer, I worked a retail job at Sue Mills Uniform Company and researched under David Eagleman at Baylor College of Medicine. I was grateful for both opportunities, but retail was too much working for the sake of looking busy, and research was too unguided. In fall of 2016, I matriculated at Rice, just across the freeway. It was close to home, and I was excited. I didn't know what I wanted to study, but I knew I enjoyed programming and the idea of the internship, so I started on the computer science track and kept an open mind. 
I took Comp 140, Computational Thinking, basically CS in the real world implemented in Python. The hash map became my favorite data structure and Python my favorite language. In spring of 2017, I took Comp 182, a combination of algorithms, data structures, and discrete math. This was the infamous weed out class. The projects were brutal and the exams even worse. I remember getting way below average on the midterms and the final. I got a 30 for the first time in my life. I also joined the IT help desk because it was the highest paying student job on campus. Turns out a lot of really smart people work there, probably for the same reason. I would come in for my shifts and hear upperclassmen talk about classes, internships, and jobs, and I would just try to absorb as much knowledge as I could. I remember someone mentioning LaTeX, and I was like, what? You write code to create your resumes? What? 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 LaTeX sounded like legging material. I was so lost, but I looked it up and created my first non-Microsoft Word resume. It's actually the same template I still use today. And sometime around then, I also created my first website. I went to the career fair and dropped off my resume at a bunch of booths. Based on sheer luck, I got an interview at a big oil and gas company called Schlumberger. The interview was almost completely behavioral and I used as many buzzwords as I could. Somehow, I got an internship offer. Freshman year was the year of new experiences. I did hack rice and helped build a mobile app. I went to MLH Prime Southwest and created a VR simulation. And we even flew to UPenn for pen apps, where we created a hardware device that allowed people to see and feel music. I remember running across the streets of Philly trying to find a radio shack that had the adapter we needed. Hackathons allowed me to learn new technologies and work with some really smart people. Lesson number three. The best way to learn programming is by doing. I also went to parties and club events and played some intramural sports. I knew a lot of people, but I wouldn't say I had a lot of friends. I could sit at any table during lunch and it wouldn't be awkward, but I would never be invited or in the group chat, if that makes sense. I joined Slumberger that summer. They provided housing and I racked up some pretty sweet Marriott points. I worked on migrating an existing project so it could be run cross-platform. I did end up making much progress, but I got to do some Python scripting and learn the intricacies of the terminal. And by intricacies, I mean LS, CD, MV, you know, the basics, because I knew nothing. It was a great summer and I got a return offer, but it was nothing like the internship. I won't bore you with all my other classes, but sophomore year is when I went deep with Java and learned functional programming and parallel programming and was exposed to C and computer systems for the first time. I want to say I grinded leak code, but honestly I didn't. If anything, I grinded emails and info sessions. In the fall, I participated in Hack Rice, where we created a music visualization site and won the alumni prize. I also got accused for two honor code violations for the same class. It was one of the most stressful periods of college. The professor accused me of copying the reference solution and hacking into a TA's laptop. What? 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 <laughs> Looking back, I don't know if I should be proud or angry that the professor thought I was even capable of such mischief. I was acquitted on both counts. Early in 2018, I did my on-site for the Explore internship at Microsoft, where you dabble in product management and software engineering. I was flown in, put in a nice hotel, and treated like royalty. I even got asked a brain teaser, which I don't think they do anymore. Kind of like this one. You're shrunken down to the size of nickels and dropped to the bottom of a blender. What do you do? But more technical and with an actual answer. I ended up getting the offer and accepting. The rest of sophomore year was more coding, but also more friendships. I finally realized I didn't have to have a lot of friends or know a lot of people. I wanted a few deep relationships rather than many superficial ones. So I spent so many nights with the same people and those same people are still my friends today. We played a lot of Smash, ate a lot of food and wrote a lot of code. Lesson number four. It's better to have a few friends than many acquaintances. The summer of 2018 was the summer of the internship. It was also the summer I got addicted to sparkling water. I had the absolute time of my life. I stayed with some roommates from Rice in Capitol Hill. I had an income and I had so much fun. We went on hikes almost every weekend, explored everything the city had to offer, and even took a road trip to Vancouver. I matured more during that summer than the first two years of college. As for work, my team watched World Cup soccer games and went whitewater rafting and hiked Mount Rainier. But the one thing I didn't really do was code. I shipped one line of C-sharp to production. The summer was everything I wanted, a lot of fun and not a lot of work. I went back to school confused. I had a return offer and such fond memories, but I was also terrified of one day being a full-time software engineer. I needed accountability. I wanted to code a lot and become confident. 
And I'm not saying you can't do that at a big company, but I wanted to try something different. So I turned down the offer before I had anything else lined up. In fall of 2018, I took more CS classes, like compilers and advanced algorithms. And I traveled to Penn Apps, where we created a project that built shared Spotify playlists for groups of people. I also did dozens of interviews and applied to fellowships. I got rejected again and again and again. And then finally, I became a finalist for the Kleiner Perkins Fellowship. I ended up getting an offer from Coursera and Gusto. But I wanted to be in San Francisco proper. So right around the holidays, I accepted an internship offer at Gusto as an engineering fellow. In spring of 2019, I got carried through operating systems by my partner and learned about databases and wrote so much SQL. I also took CS Ethics, and it changed the way I think about technology and our responsibility as programmers. I also started taking graduate level classes so I could finish my bachelor's and master's at the same time. I thought my summer in Seattle couldn't be beat, but summer 2019 was incredible. I lived in the heart of San Francisco with some friends from Rice, and that summer I worked on and shipped the in-app calendar, a feature that to this day lives on Gusto's top navbar. I was the only engineer on a team with one other PM and designer. I learned Ruby on Rails, GraphQL, and wrote more code than the previous two summers combined. I worked hard, and it was exhilarating. The fellowship was also amazing. I got to hang out with some incredible people, many of whom I still stay in touch with today. Lesson number five, investing in your personal relationships is the most important thing you can do. In fall of 2019, I took distributed systems and I also took creative writing. It's where I fell in love with storytelling. And I did a lot of interviews. And after a lot of failed coding challenges, rejections, tech screens and on-sites, I got offers from Flexport, Productive, Capital One, Confluent, Amazon, Thumbtack, Ramp, and Bolt, along with my return offer from Gusto. This was all pre-pandemic, and I wanted to be in San Francisco. I wanted a place that had experienced engineers, but was also small enough where I could get a lot of ownership and grow. Fintech was popping with Stripe, Robinhood, Brex, and so many others, and I thought payments was a really cool space I could go deep in. I was really impressed with the people I met at Bolt, and it was my favorite interview experience. So I ended up accepting an offer at Bolt as a software engineer on the financial products team. In the spring, I took computer security, computer vision, and some other really cool classes before graduating with my bachelor's and master's in computer science in May of 2020. I failed many exams in college, but there's one thing I'm really proud of. I always turned in all my assignments on time and complete. It was the pandemic, so I moved back home, and in June, I started full-time remotely at Bolt, where I've been ever since. I was engineer 30-something, and the rest is history. In the rest of 2020, I helped take Forever 21 Live, wrote my first async job, learned about private label credit cards and the other complexities of payments, and dabbled in the depths of AWS, infrastructure, and Terraform. I got to work on so many cool problems with some insanely talented engineers. In 2021, I led an entire project for the first time, started our tech blog, and organized our hackathon. I also wrote more code than ever before. And in the fall, I got promoted. These days, I write Go code, some React, and some GraphQL. Wherever you are in your journey, I'm proud of you. Keep going, keep growing. If I can ever help you in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. It's 2022. Here's to the next 10 years. Till next time, cheers.